As the dust settled following SpaceX's brief explosive test launch of Starship in April, both the company and the Federal Aviation Administration completed investigating the aftermath. For the next step, SpaceX's Tom Ochenero just shared that the company is real close to the next Starship launch. The company is working closely with the regulators. The FAA sent a letter to SpaceX outlining a list of 63 corrective actions to be taken before a launch license will be issued for the next Starship orbital flight attempt. To be clear, the list of changes was developed in cooperation with SpaceX engineers and approved by the FAA. The way the process actually works is that SpaceX determines what it thinks caused the mishap and submits a report, including corrective actions, to the FAA. That report was submitted on August 21st. As part of its side of the investigation, the FAA reviewed that report and sent over a final list of required changes to SpaceX last week. On Sunday, Musk claimed on X that the SpaceX team has completed 57 of the improvements required by the FAA and that the remaining six items refer to future actions for later flights. However, the FAA's letter sent to SpaceX on Thursday implies that the company has not yet submitted its application for a launch license for Starship's next attempt at reaching space. So it appears the Starship is getting closer to launching again, but there's still some paperwork to be done. It's also possible that SpaceX still needs to demonstrate the efficacy of some of those improvements to the Starship to the satisfaction of the FAA. This all means that it's unlikely we'll see it fly in the next few days, but perhaps we can hope for some action in the next few weeks or so. During this period of waiting, yesterday overnight, SpaceX transported Super Heavy Booster 10 to Massey's test site for cryogenic thrust simulator testing. It's highly likely that for the third integrated test flight, which may very well be the first full orbital attempt, Ship 28 and Booster 10 will fly together. And well, Starship Gazer shared this absolutely amazing video about B-10. It's unbelievable seeing how these rockets are up close and it really satisfies my as well as others curiosity about how they are set up. Thank you so much, Starship Gazer, for sharing this with us. And with its current height and power, Starship is clearly very ambitious. However, Musk still declared that the Starship is likely to undergo significant changes in its upcoming versions, potentially becoming 10 to 20% longer. Consider this, Starship is now 122 meters, or about 400 feet, in length. If it were to increase in size by 10 to 20%, its new height would be between 100 and 34.2 meters, which is about 441 feet, or 146.4 meters, which is about 480 feet. This expansion would increase the spacecraft's payload capacity, allowing it to carry more passengers, cargo, and supplies on each mission. This, in turn, would make space travel more economically viable, bringing us one step closer to Musk's dream of making Mars a habitable planet for humans. Moreover, a longer starship could enhance its interplanetary capabilities. As missions to distant planets require extensive supplies and fuel, a larger spacecraft would accommodate these necessities more efficiently, potentially reducing the number of trips required for colonization efforts. This could significantly lower the overall cost of space exploration and colonization, making it more attainable for governments and private enterprises alike. The decision to increase the Starship's length is in line with Musk's penchant for continuous improvement and innovation. SpaceX has a history of iterative design and rapid development, and this approach has been a driving force behind the company's success. Musk's willingness to adapt and refine his designs in response to new challenges and opportunities sets him apart as a visionary leader in the aerospace industry. While the prospect of a longer Starship is exciting, it also comes with technical challenges and engineering considerations. Lengthening the spacecraft may affect its structural integrity, propulsion systems, and overall performance. Engineers that SpaceX will need to carefully evaluate and address these challenges to ensure the safety and reliability of the Starship on its missions. In any case, please keep in mind that these figures are based on the percentage increase mentioned in the original statement and assume that the increase applies proportionally to the overall length of the spacecraft. Actual design changes and specifications may vary, depending on engineering considerations and project developments. In another significant piece of news, SpaceX just bypassed Blue Origin and Telesat booked 14 launches with SpaceX.
Telesat's LEO constellation, known as Lightspeed, will operate 36 times closer to Earth than traditional satellites, resulting in quicker transmission of information and improved broadband service, even in remote areas. Sound familiar? Telesat CEO Dan Goldberg expressed his enthusiasm, stating that the agreement with SpaceX is a significant step towards launching Lightspeed. Telesat chose SpaceX due to the company's competitive pricing, performance, reliability, and schedule tempo. In a statement, Telesat called SpaceX's Falcon 9 the most reliable and only reusable orbital rocket flying today. That is undoubtedly true, with SpaceX's Falcon rocket family currently sitting at more than 230 consecutive successful missions. It's affordable, it's reliable, they can launch multiple satellites a week. It's phenomenal, Goldberg added. Telesat said it will take advantage of SpaceX's high launch cadence to rapidly deploy the light speed satellites which it will fly in a mix of polar and and mid-inclination orbits, roughly 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers above Earth. Each light-speed satellite will weigh about 1,600 pounds or 750 kilograms at launch, around the same as the current iteration of SpaceX's own Starlink internet satellites. The contract with SpaceX encompasses 14 launches, with each Falcon 9 rocket carrying up to 18 satellites into orbit. The deployment of the complete constellation is expected to be completed by the end of 2027, enabling Telesat to offer global broadband service, albeit three years later than initially planned. In reality, Telesat announced a multi-launch agreement with Blue Origin in 2019 for an unspecified number of missions to deliver light-speed satellites to orbit using Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket. At the time, Blue Origin said the New Glenn would make its first launch in 2021, but that is now unlikely to happen before 2025. Meanwhile, Telesat and Relativity Space also revealed a contract to launch light-speed satellites in smaller bunches on Relativity's Terran 1 rocket, which flew on its first and only test launch in March. Relativity is moving on from the Terran 1 and focusing on the much larger and partially reusable Terran R. We never envisioned Relativity as part of our initial Constellation deployment, the Telesat spokesperson said. Instead, we can leverage their capability for single satellite deployments to either replace a satellite or add additional capacity to the network. In short, SpaceX is clearly top dog in the industry. During a news conference on September 11th at the Airspace and Cyber Conference, the Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall also said his department is comfortable working with SpaceX despite recent reports about Elon Musk restricting the use of the company's Starlink satellite services in Ukraine. The U.S. Air Force and other DoD organizations have acquired Starlink internet services under various contracts and have not experienced problems, noted Kendall. After Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2000, 2022, SpaceX provided Starlink services at its own expense and through an agreement with the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID. Most recently, the DoD has signed agreements with SpaceX and other satellite communication services providers to support Ukraine. Kendall said he has not seen those contracts, but would expect them to be clear on what's expected from providers. While the Air Force is quite comfortable relying on SpaceX for launch services, said Kendall, Starlink is a relatively new product, and the government is still learning about its capabilities. Being dependent on large and powerful companies is not unusual for the DoD, Kendall noted. We're highly dependent on other companies, like Lockheed Martin. As a launch provider, SpaceX has been a reliable competitor, he said. They've brought prices down, and their launches have been pretty reliable so far. And there you have it, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.